Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about the connection between hormones and eczema and how the two play into each other, if hormones can make your eczema worse, and what's going on with your body. And so we kind of have to break it up into what type of person you are. So as many of you know, men have one set of hormones and then women have a different set of hormones. And so men are predominantly testosterone, women are predominantly estrogen, but each kind of has a small percentage of both in their bodies. So the majority of this conversation is going to probably be leaning on the women's side because we experience much more hormonal changes over our lives than men do. So just to quickly address one little topic, it's a little bit awkward, but bear with me. I do get questions every once in a while that have to do with, do things that occur like sexually affect eczema? And so the answer is yes. Anything that you do that either raises your stress or heats up your body will make your eczema feel bad, but in the long run, it's fine. So I just wanted to clarify that. And basically it just means like, you know, if you are masturbating or if you're having sex and your body temperature raises, body temperature raising will affect the itchiness of your eczema. So just a little tidbit for the people who wonder those sorts of things. So now we're kind of just going to jump right into talking about women and their hormones and how that affects eczema. But first, before the men click off, I wanted to mention that you probably noticed that your eczema has come and gone throughout your life and maybe you are wondering what that's about and so I wanted to quickly touch on that. So my story basically is I've had it off and on my whole life. Had it as a baby, got it again at like six years old, again as a middle schooler, had it all through high school in small amounts, through college in small amounts, and then once I graduated college it got much worse. And so what happened? Um, Basically, eczema isn't really one single tiny thing. Uh, the best root cause of eczema that I can explain is leaky gut. But backing up from there, eczema occurs from toxic overload. And we're actually quite lucky that we ended up with eczema instead of something much more severe like cancer. I mean, cancer is basically the same thing. It's from toxic overload. Have you been smoking? Have you been drinking? Have you been living in a polluted area? Have you been eating very badly? And so for me, when I got my massive flare up, it was a combination of emotional stress, emotional eating, living in a new polluted city. And I was trying to battle like school and I was working and I didn't like my work and I didn't know what I felt about school. And you put all of it together and you end up with eczema. And so one reason that you might end up with eczema at certain parts of your life rather than others may have to do with hormones. So, you know, if you're a woman or, you know, any gender and you're changing uh, hormones in any sort of way, so like when you hit puberty, that's a great time for eczema to flare. It causes such imbalances in your body and, you know, when your body's not in a state where it's like happy and good and healthy, you'll end up with eczema. And so, you know, going through puberty could do it. You know, when you reach around your 20s, your hormones kind of change again. And so those are all great, like, options for when your eczema would like to come. So as a kid, I was actually a super, like, chocolate, cookies, cake, all the junk food. Um, so there's really no wonder why I had eczema as a kid. A lot of people wonder why their babies have eczema and I'll have to make a whole separate video on that, but it does have to do with the toxic load of the mother's breast milk. So if you're breastfeeding and your child has eczema, try adjusting your diet, clean it up, avoid fridge foods, fried foods, refined sugar, eggs, dairy, gluten, and you should see some improvements. Um, also, you know, sometimes babies just endure stress and the combo of all of it drives your baby to have eczema. It's very sad, but today we're talking about hormones. So coming back to that, let's dive into the women. Um, 
So there's a couple different stages of your life where you're going to experience probably pretty bad eczema. And one is postpartum, AKA after pregnancy. So if you didn't have it while you were pregnant, the change of your hormones after you're pregnant are a very likely reason your eczema flared out of nowhere. Um, also, if you think about it, there's a lot of stress having a child. Putting your body under that sort of stress overload is also a great connection to make your body have eczema. So that's one example. Another example is I get a lot of questions about periods and periods connection to eczema. If you are flaring worse while like right before your period or on your period, don't stress out because it is stress and it is just hormone imbalances that are causing you to feel that way. Another thing that you'll probably experience is anything that raises your body temperature, as I said before, is likely to make you very itchy. So if we think about women and hormones, what part of lives do women get very hot? Well, menopause, premenopause. These are just changes that a woman's body goes through when they're transitioning into their later stages of life where their bodies don't need to make babies anymore and their hormones drastically change. And so with these come hot flashes and hot flashes are excellent opportunities for your eczema to get hot, overworked, the skin is changing temperature pretty rapidly and that's gonna lead to, you know, very, a lot of itchiness, um, a lot of different things. And so what you can do is use things that'll cool off your body during this. Um, you know, if you're having a hot flash and you can go take a cool shower, do that. Don't add more heat to it. If you go in the ocean, if you go in a pool, that's great. Anything to get your body to regulate its temperature a little bit better. So for example, use cool sheets, use a cool pillow. If you have a topper on your mattress, try to get one that's cooling. And keeping that body temperature down is gonna really help. Also, severe changes in temperature will also make you very itchy. So for example, if it's winter and it's cold outside, but you come inside and you sit by a fire, that's probably gonna trigger some itchiness. But I wanted to let you guys know that none of this is systemic toxic buildup. All of this is okay. Yes, every once in a while you're gonna feel itchier than other times, but you're not causing more harm to your body unless you're stressed. Stress causes leaky gut. Leaky gut causes immune system imbalance. Leaky gut also causes liver overworked. And all that put together equals eczema. So just so you know, there's no one leading cause of eczema. It's like all these different horrible things that can happen to your body come together and equal leaky gut, bad immune system, overworked liver. And so if you haven't already switched all of your products to be clean, so for example, your makeup, switch it to clean products. Go on ewg.org, I believe, and you should be able to find non-toxic products and start to learn about what's toxic. If you see the word perfume, that's toxic. So spraying yourself with perfume that's not essential oils, that's toxic. Putting toxic makeup on, using hand sanitizer is another bad one. I can go on and on and on for days, but I hope this helped you guys. I know sometimes it's very confusing. You'll have your period, you'll get your eczema worse, you go through puberty, you get eczema, and it's just a mess. Just know that like, the healing process is so worth it. I've, I feel so much better. I can handle stress better. I know my body so much better. And had I never taken the journey to heal naturally, I never would have known how it feels to understand my body truly. So with that being said, I'm going to stop this video here. And if this helped you guys, give this video a big thumbs up. And in the comments, let me know if you've seen hormonal changes to your body while you have eczema. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye.